today is a game changer. It's the most important show that I've ever done on cholesterol. Now, you're about to meet the controversial doctors who say that everything we have been taught about cholesterol is wrong, that it doesn't cause clogged arteries or heart disease or even matter. Now, their explosive new book on cholesterol is turning the medical community upside down. Meet Dr. Steven Sinatra, a cardiologist, and Dr. Johnny Bowden, a doctor of nutrition. Two doctors with one very controversial message. Everything the medical community believes about cholesterol is wrong. Their provocative new book, The Great Cholesterol Myth, is sparking a whole revolution in how doctors think about cholesterol. The idea that cholesterol causes heart disease is a lie. Most people are worried about how high their cholesterol is, but the higher your cholesterol, the longer you'll live. I've been studying cholesterol for 40 years. I bought into this whole myth that fats cause heart attack, cause you to gain weight. I mean, I bought it hook, line, and sinker. I've had dozens of patients with low cholesterol numbers who were dying of heart attacks. It just didn't fit. Something wasn't adding up, and we needed to get at the bottom of this. Blaming cholesterol for heart disease is like blaming the firemen for the fire. We've been told for years not to eat beef and butter and dairy. Those are great foods, they're saturated fats. It's insanity. So we're here to tell you, eat the burger, that's not gonna be the thing that kills you. Mm. The truth is, cholesterol will not harm you. Mm. Yes. So Dr. Sinatra, why is this book so controversial? Well, you know, we've been led to believe that cholesterol causes heart disease, but it doesn't. I mean, doctors have been taught this, and millions of dollars have been spent on cholesterol-lowering drugs, and for most people, they don't work. But here's the real travesty. We've gotten off the mark. We've all felt that cholesterol causes heart disease, but there are other causes that we have to focus on. You say we've missed those. We've missed them. Dr. Bowden, from a nutritional perspective, what are the biggest mistakes we're making? The idea that fat and cholesterol cause heart disease. Trying to lower heart disease by lowering cholesterol is like trying to lower calories by taking the lettuce off your burger. It's just not the target we should be going after. So Dr. Sinatra and Dr. Bowden say we got it all wrong when it comes to cholesterol by making two fundamental mistakes, and they're big ones. They say the first mistake is believing that cholesterol causing heart, causes heart attacks. So I must say, I was taught that going through a school I think most folks here probably believe that cholesterol is involved with heart attacks. Why is that a mistake? Well, first of all, cholesterol does not cause heart disease. Look, half the people with normal cholesterol have heart disease, and half the people with elevated cholesterol have normal hearts. So something's wrong here with this scenario. And look, you need cholesterol. It's vital for our cellular function. It makes vitamin D in the skin. It helps with cerebral vascular function. It helps with neurotransmitter function so we can think better and it lubricates the skin. So it's a vital component of our lives and it's protective. You know, it protects people from infectious disease or the GI tract of the lungs. The higher your cholesterol, the less hemorrhagic stroke. And I gotta tell you, the higher your cholesterol, according to some studies in Europe, the longer you're gonna live. You're kidding me. So some are arguing that higher cholesterols are actually better for you. Yes. Well, the Framingham study, which is the longest running study of heart disease, the Framingham, Massachusetts, the people with the older people with the highest cholesterol actually lived the longest. That's right in the data. Dr. Bowden, why is it that all of us came to believe that cholesterol in our food was a risk factor for cholesterol well, in, in our hearts? It's what we've been taught for decades. And it, it's, uh, you know, people believe the earth was flat for hundreds of years as well. And it takes a long time to change those kind of perceptions. We've been taught this based on some research that was done in the 60s and 70s which has since been shown to be extremely faulty. That research couldn't even get published today. It's been taken apart, but most well-meaning doctors who have no time anyway just don't have time to actually read the details of the research because in that research it shows pretty clearly that cholesterol doesn't really lead to heart disease. It's a bad predictor. So I thought long and hard as we're getting ready for this show about how to explain this to all of you. So I'm about to show you why this book is so controversial and at its core why it's causing such a debate among heart doctors, general practitioners, and confusing all of you. Now, at the center of the debate is this important question. Are the, tra are the traditional cholesterol tests that we do even relevant? Let me start there. To do this, I gotta demonstrate what we think cholesterol is and what it does in your body. So, vitally important information. I'm gonna go through it at a reasonable pace so we can all understand this. And this is what the ultimate debate comes down to. This, my friends, is what cholesterol looks like, right? This cholesterol 
It's found in your food. It's found in your body. It's goopy stuff. All right? Now, when you see this, it doesn't make you happy, right? You don't really want to have that lying around. That's what we thought for many years, especially with those studies, that in the early years of medicine were seeming so important. It turns out cholesterol is carried in two forms. It's carried in a form where it's protected. This is called healthy or HDL cholesterol. Right? Because it's in a good spot, uh, it has special characteristics. It doesn't rupture. The lousy LDL cholesterol doesn't have this protective case around it. Why does that matter? Because when you go into your blood vessel, and this is what the blood vessel looks like, if you've got the healthy kind of cholesterol in this nice casing, protected, and you go down the artery and you bang into the artery, nothing happens. It doesn't matter that it banged into the artery. Because the cholesterol is hidden in these balloons and the balloons are in this case, it's carried in a way that doesn't allow it to hurt you. This kind of cholesterol ends up being good for you. That's why healthy cholesterol numbers end up not being a risk factor. In fact, it's a good cholesterol to have. But here's the problem. You take some of these cholesterols, right, these kinds of cholesterols that are carried in a lousy form, this sort of flimsy form here, and you take these and you try to pass these down the blood vessel and watch what happens. It all of a sudden splatters all over the place. And now you have plaques deposited through here that are causing all kinds of problems, gumming up your arteries. That's the fundamental difference between how cholesterol is carried inside your body. Now, I think it's vitally important to know cholesterol numbers. That's my perspective. But my colleagues, these doctors, will argue that it's not the full story. So, Dr. Sinatra, I want to go through this slowly for the audience because we've been asking people to get their cholesterol numbers tested. Right. And I just explained why the total cholesterol doesn't matter, right? We showed that. It's how it's carried that matters. But what else am I missing here with this demonstration? Well, the root cause of heart disease is inflammation. I mean, inflammation causes that plaque. And what causes inflammation? Well, it's how much we weigh, what we put into our body. And sugar is the enemy. Sugar is the villain. And when you have sugar in your blood, when you rub those balloons, it creates plaque. It creates oxidative stress and plaque. And that plaque hits the, 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 the food substance. And the sugar causes all that gunk in the vessels. You get an enormous insulin response. It's that simple. Well, you know, this brings us to a huge problem, folks, right? Because we've used cholesterol numbers to guide us in giving you cholesterol-lowering drugs, like the statin drugs, the you know, many drugs, Lipitor, Mevacor, all those drugs that we give you. And it turns out, Dr. Sinatra, Dr. Bowden argue the second cholesterol mistake is believing that statins are safe and will prolong your life. Now, this is incredibly controversial. Mm. So why don't you think they work, and why do you think they're unsafe? Well, you know, I've been practicing cardiology for 40 years, and I used statins for 20 years. And I have to tell you, statins, you know, they're anti-inflammatory drugs. There's no question. They can thin the blood. They happen to lower cholesterol. But that's the problem. They lower cholesterol, but cholesterol is not the root cause of heart disease. It's inflammation. And these statins have tremendous side effects. I mean, tremendous side effects. So we have to really get away from statins. But statins will work in one particular population. Middle-aged men with coronary disease, uh, preferably those men with a low HDL. So statins have some utility, but for the general population, especially women and children, and children, I don't prescribe statins at all. None. None. Do you have no women in your practice who are on statin drugs? I might have less than one percent of women uh, in my practice on statin drugs. Uh, who here, if I can ask among the women, who who's on a statin drug? Put your hands up. I mean, there, there's a dozen people just in this section of the audience here. So your guess would be, if they were in your practice, they would not be on no. statin drugs. And the most common consult I saw for years was women in their 30s and 40s that would come into my office and say, Dr. Sinatra, I'm on this cholesterol-lowering drug. Can I get off? I would take them off immediately. They'd be crying. They'd be hugging me because they were told that they were going to die with high cholesterol and nothing is farther from the truth. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize less than 1% of women in your practice, in my practice are on statin, statin drugs. drugs. Well, let me ask you this then. In general, if they tend to be safe, I mean, I know you say they have side effects, but I didn't realize they're as, as commonly reported to cardiologists mm -hmm. as, as you're making it seem, then they would seem to be a relatively easy thing to give patients. Am I missing the boat there? No, they're easy to give patients, and that's the problem. But the side effect profile is enormous. You know, the Women's Health Initiative in postmenopausal women showed a 48% incidence of diabetes on those women on statin drugs. And younger women in the Jupiter study got a 13% incidence. So women got to be really careful about statin drugs, and they can also predispose you to cancer as well. So 
I am dreadfully concerned about statin drugs. Can I, yes, but, please, uh, um, you know, the child's brain is not fully grown until age 25. The cerebral cortex isn't finished growing. We need cholesterol for memory, for thinking, for sex hormones. The idea of putting children on cholesterol-lowering drugs is just the greatest tragedy waiting to happen. It's a bad idea. Well, it's happening a lot. I know. But can I go back for one second? Because I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by the side effects you're reporting. So you're, you're saying there's data that statin drugs cause diabetes? Correct. And cancer? And cancer. And coronary calcification, memory loss, sexual dysfunction, muscle pain, liver problems. Well, why don't we hear about these more? Because they're grossly underreported. They are so grossly underreported, it's unbelievable. There was a, a tremendous study which actually surveyed doctors and looked at the side effects being reported. 65% of doctors never reported it to MedWatch because they didn't believe it was associated with statin drugs. Well, Dr. Bowden, if we're not going to use statins, then, then what would you recommend to folks if they wanted to deal with the risk of heart attack and blockages sure. you just showed here? I, I talk about things that will keep the heart healthy, not just keep your cholesterol lower. Lowering inflammation, which you can do with foods and fish oil and certain supplements, but certainly with anti-inflammatory foods. Uh, getting rid of toxic relationships, lowering stress in your life, uh, getting some sunshine and some vitamin D and being out in the, in the, and getting some exercise. All these things keep the heart healthy. And keeping the heart healthy is not the same as lowering cholesterol. So before I give my thoughts on statins, uh, I, I, I want to just say, I, I think we can agree that food can be a potent option. Huge. We're gonna, when we come back, I'm going to talk about the food prescription to reduce inflammation in your heart and how to do it naturally. So stay with us. Up next. How come you're not worried more about fat? They say fat is not the enemy. And you're arguing that we're wasting our time. I think it's the wrong target. Plus, the grocery list. Today we're talking to the controversial doctors who say everything that we know about cholesterol is wrong and that eating butter or burgers won't affect cholesterol or contribute to heart disease. Now, typically when someone's diagnosed with high cholesterol, they're put on a low-fat diet. I have done this my whole career. Dr. Sinatra, I gather you do that as well? Me too. I did it for years, but not anymore. I tell people to eat healthy fats like avocados and walnuts and almonds and, you know, even... Even grass-fed beef or bison or salmon, these are very vital, healthy fats. Just avoid the killer fats. Those are the trans fats. Now, Dr. Bowden, how come you're not worried more about fat? Well, the latest research is very clear that saturated fat, when looked at in terms of heart disease, there's no relationship. It does have a relationship to cholesterol, but it tends to raise the good cholesterol far more than the bad cholesterol. When they look at intake of saturated fat and try to correlate it with heart disease, zero correlation. And the research is very, very clear on that. So I'm not worried about fat. I'm worried about sugar. I'm worried about inflammation. I'm worried about foods that uh, turn into sugar in a heartbeat because those are the things that really drive disease. So it's as simple as that, as cutting out the sugar. Well, it's a great place to start, but it's not just the sugar. It's also the foods that convert to sugar in a snap of the finger, like cereals and breads and pastas and all the processed carbohydrates that our diets are so high in. That's the stuff that's causing the problem. How can we all be missing this story? I mean, we've, you guys are working so hard to try to do the right thing, right? We all are. You try to cut down on the, on the foods that are rich in cholesterol, and you're arguing that we're wasting our time. It's, I think it's the wrong target. I think, again, that, that we're concentrating on a molecule that we desperately need for brain health and for memory and for thinking and for sex drives, and instead of concentrating on the real causes of heart disease, which are inflammation, stress, and sugar. So cholesterol foods like, you know, shrimp or, you know, meats, you'd be fine with. For 99% of the population, the cholesterol in the diet has virtually no effect on anything of importance. You guys all happy with that? Yeah, they love that. All right, come on. Because this is controversial, what I want to do is talk about how to reduce inflammation, and by that, lower the rates of heart disease. So mm -hmm. you've given us a list. These are simple things. We're going to go through your grocery list aisle by aisle mm -hmm. and explain to folks the exact foods we know are important. We're going to start off in the protein aisle. You suggested sardines, mm -hmm. right? You also suggested, you can flip that down there, Meats, grass-fed beef. Grass-fed beef. Both are very high in omega-3s, and those are the most anti-inflammatory molecules on the planet, and it's contained in grass-fed beef and sardines and, and um, uh, wild salmon and things like that, and that really does lower inflammation. So if someone came to you with a hamburger, would you eat it? If it was grass-fed, yes. And I know grass-fed is not always available across the country, but you can get organic. You can go to a collective and get it, because when the, when the cow eats grass, it means it's, it, it literally is higher in omega-3s. When you have factory farmed 
beef. That's very hard to recommend because it's very high in hormones and antibiotics and steroids. So I don't recommend that kind of beef. But really healthy beef raised on pasture is great for you. Okay. Next aisle is is the beverage aisle, and you put pomegranate here as one mm -hmm. of your favorites. Why pomegranate juice? You know, we don't often think of drinking something to help the heart, but there's so many antioxidants in pomegranate juice and so many natural anti-inflammatories that it really helps reduce that inflammation that causes the LDL to burst in the, in the, in the artery. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> If your heart pounding in there. That's yeah, the exactly. spice aisle. You recommend turmeric. All right, this is a super spice. This is the stuff that makes Indian food yellow and, and gives curry its, its normal color. And in, in this spice is something called curcumin, which has a major effect on about 16 different diseases. It's anti-inflammatory. It's great for the liver. It's an antioxidant. It's just an all-around wonderful spice. I sprinkle it on everything, scrambled eggs, vegetables, anything you want. It tastes great, and it really, really is good for you. And you also like garlic. Garlic is there. great because garlic helps lower blood pressure, which, unlike cholesterol, is a real risk for heart, risk factor for heart disease. Agreed. That's number one risk for it. And yep. finally, it's in the produce aisle. And this is an important aisle for all of us. You recommend lots of vegetables. Lots of vegetables. Okay. And, and you can have lots of vegetables even if you're on a high-protein, high-fat diet. You can be on the Atkins diet and eat lots of vegetables. These are basically free foods. There are over 4,000 plant chemicals in fruits and vegetables that are anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. They're just great things, flavanols and flavonoids and things with all long names that nobody needs to remember. <laughs> but they're just really, really good for you. And berries and cherries and all this group of family yep. of products. Apples particularly have an anti-inflammatory called quercetin. They're one of the best sources of quercetin on the, on the planet, and they're just really great for you. They have vitamin C, they have uh, fiber, and they have lots of nutrients in them as well that are helpful for lowering inflammation. Yeah. It's great information. Now, coming up, the real question I think a lot of you are probably thinking, could you be on the road to a heart attack? Next, I've got the one test, the one test that you must take. Talking to the authors of the controversial new book about cholesterol. Now, there's a cutting-edge cholesterol test that we actually agree together could predict your risk of a heart attack. It's a test that's called a particle size test, a particle size test, and it measures specifics about the bad cholesterol in your body. So, Dr. Sinatra, why should you be asking your physician about this test? This is a very important test, and it's leading-edge science, and we talked about it in our book, and we, do, we really did a good job in this because it's a little bit confusing. Let me explain. The particle size is LDL, but not all LDL is harmful. Let me give you an example. That large particle LDL, it's fluffy, it's large, it can't get into the artery wall. It's not going to do anything, so who cares? This is an AB particle. That's an A. Now, this is a B particle. This is what we call a BB shot particle. So if you have your blood tested for cholesterol, you must, you must ask your doctor to do this special particle test mm -hmm. because that they'll measure the number of these particles and if you have a lot of these particles, an overwhelming amount of these particles, they can get inside the artery wall, set the stage for inflammation, which sets the stage for plaque, which can be a harbinger for you know, coronary disease. But that's what you want to know. That's the most important thing. So just remember that little demonstration I did early with the heart artery and I got the plaster all over my, my jacket, right? So the large particles, these ones, because they're large, they're fluffy, they bounce around and they don't get stuck anywhere. These small ones, get stuck inside the little nooks and crannies of that artery over there. When that happens, they bore their way in there. And by doing that, they, they create like grenades. They explode, creating all this inflammation. That contributes fundamentally to the plaque and to the risk of the heart attack. This is the big change in how we think about the role of cholesterol in your life. So how do folks find these tests? What do they cost? Actually, there's lots of different manufacturers. All they have to do is go to their doctor and say, can I get the particle size test for my LDL cholesterol? Because remember, not all LDL is bad. The television set calls it a bad cholesterol. Mm -hmm. This is healthy cholesterol. This is bad cholesterol. Right. And it only costs between $10 and $100, and most insurance is covered as well. So you know what you're getting, right? Particle size test. Particle. We got clear on this. Here's my bottom line in cholesterol. If you don't have a heart problem, and your doctor wants to give you a statin, especially if you're a woman, hmm. I want you to push back. And in particular, I want you to ask for this LDL particle size test that you just learned about here. It's a test that's available everywhere. Mm -hmm. Go get the test. If your LDL cholesterol, the lousy cholesterol, and it matters to me what that number is, we're going to keep checking that on the show. And that's what you're going to get checked when you go to your doctor anyway. If it is high, you should worry about your heart, but don't just panic. You should actually then push to make sure you get this particle test done so you know if it's a big deal or not for you before you're put on medications. In the meantime, don't forget what Dr. Bowden said. It's your sugar in your diet that's the problem. It's even worse of an issue than the fat in your diet. 
So you got a little bit more freedom to eat some of the foods you love, but be really strict on the sugars. That's where the problem is, not just for your heart, but for your waist as well. Did I get it right? You got, you it, got it so right. right. Oh, finally. All right. <laughs> Up next, secrets to boost your energy and to stop overeating. Stay with us.